Juventus have been docked 10 points. Juventus, one of the most historically successful sides in Italy over its long period and long time in football. Once champions, many a times the Sagetto winners, but not anymore. Juventus even got to a Champions League final, but that even though they failed, that didn't matter. That showed that you're still dominant in Europe. Massimo Allegri returned and things just didn't go well. Juventus in poor form, in poor times, being banned, deducted points, financial issues, it's time for a change. In this career mode, we attempt to get Juventus just back into Europe, back near their best. So welcome to the Juventus career mode, like the Dortmund and PSG one before, a few episodes where we try to take them on. We're going to use Fiorentina man manager Italiano. He's a realistic choice, I think, for Juve to bring in as a new manager ahead of Massimo Allegri. So that is the first change. The PSG one we brought in Zidane Zidane. In the Dortmund one, we stuck with Edin Terzic. But with this one, we are changing manager. Italiano comes in. Juventus is the team. The budget won't be so big. We will be under financial constraints like Juventus are in real life. I think he's a good signing for Juve. He's been pretty good. Got uh, Fiorentina to a Conference League final. Playing some pretty nice football in Serie A as well last season. The first thing we did was actually bring in um, Mamma Locatelli in a full-time deal. 45.2 million euros. That is a good signing. A permanent deal completed to bring him in. A rating. I think we had to make his deal permanent. He is going to be a key mainstay in the central midfield role, in that whole midfield role. Our little metronome in there, and he's going to play a big, big part. Now, we have a massive, massive squad, lots of players that are currently out on loan that we've brought back, and we look to sell, move on, bring in money, lots of money, in order to make a few changes. And Massimo Lago is playing this 3 5 2. We're not going to be playing the 3 5 2. That's not the way Italiano played with Fiorentina. We're going to try and replicate the way he played with Fiorentina. So, first thing we want to do is go from a 3 1 4 2, which they currently are playing. And we want to go into a 4-3-3. A flat 4-3-3 with three central midfielders. And just move Locatelli a little bit back if he was in that holding role. And bring the midfield very tight together. It's all about the, the wing backs overlapping. The forwards being aggressive. And the midfield just working it around that midfield. Of course, also the holding midfield are picking it up. Tactically, we change as well a bit more. Maybe aggressive defensively than Massimo Allegri's side. A bit less... You know, honed in on that defensive side of the game, which Allegri has been. I mean, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you what style Allegri's playing at the moment. He was once a really highly rated manager. I think this return to Juve has been really, really poor for him, and it is his time to go. Kulusevski, we couldn't get him to go to Spurs in a permanent deal. Chelsea came and said, "How about 65 million euros to take him back to the Premier League with Chelsea?" Well, you know, Tabolo loves spending money recklessly. 65 million euros. Dejan Kulusevski moves away from the club. And there was a few moves away from the club as well as he got a big, big list of signings. Players I'd like to bring in. But first, we have to get the moves out. You know, move players on. So, Sule joined Mallorca on a two-year loan. We moved out Ranocchia to a 12-month loan to Wolves in the Premier League. We saw Philip Correa leave the club. Two-year loan to Montpellier. Outgoing was Marco Piaka. Just under 3 million euros, he moved to Turkey with Galatasaray. We saw the Silio join Leipzig, a strange one. I, didn't, I was surprised by that offer, 8 million euros for him to go there. Dragosunt goes to Schalke on a two-year loan in Germany. Uh, Kyle George, who's probably not good enough right now, 12-month loan to FC Porto in Portugal. Good move for him. Daniel Iragani, just in the 7 million euros, he moves to West Ham United. Uh, De Winter, he goes to Sheffield United, another Premier League move for another one of our players, a young player there, one for the future, certainly to Juve's side. Uh, Mali Ake, 2.4 million euros, he moves to Championship side Watford. And Stefano Gori, just under a million euros, goes to Luton Town in the Premier League. So as for bringing players in, Roberto Pereira really did look at, to me, a player that I wanted to go for, but Latomba was the choice because we do need a fullback. We've got the Neil that right back role, selling the Sigalo, we have no other right back in the team. And Alexandro is a player I'm looking to move on. He is just not one, the player that he once was many years ago. The Brazilian, 11.6 million they want plus Sandro. We're going to try and say about, what about nine for Latomba? I don't think this will get an A rating deal. 7.5 didn't work. I think we can get him for nine. Nine plus Alexandro is worth quite a bit. You know, 11 million euros, Alexandro. I'm surprised at that. Latomba agreed. There was no problem with personal terms as expected. And there we go. So Latomba joins Juve from OGC Nice. I think he's a really athletic fullback can complement Danilo on that right-hand side. Only a C rating, I, I didn't think it'd be an A. You have to get players really cheap when you get the player swaps in there to get an A rating. 78 rated for the Frenchman, can play left-back as well. He's definitely a good player and a younger player in this squad. Now, I'm at Laporte on the fringe at Manchester City, of course, uh, at the time. 
And we're thinking, you know, Juve should have gone for Laporte in this summer. And a one-year loan, that is what something Juve would do. A two-year loan, they wouldn't accept Manchester City. So a one-year loan will do me. And with an option to buy, that's the way the Italian clubs do transfers. City do want a bit of money here, actually. 56 million. We wanted 40. I think they'd meet in the middle at 50 million euros. I mean, that's like 45 million for Ryan Merrick Laporte on a permanent deal if we can get that 52 million. I think they'll go to 50 Manchester City. I do believe they'll go to 50 million euros because I think we could afford that as well. A bit of a sell-on percentage of 20%. 15, 20% is a bit high, isn't it, actually? Very high. Let's get down to 50 million euros. I think they'll accept that Manchester City. They will do. They wanted to move on Laporte. So Laporte could be agreed if he agrees the low move, but Nicolas Pepe is the next one. He was ridiculously good at Lille in the French League. Yes, he's not the best of scenes at Nice, and he's been a bit of a flop at Arsenal. 72 million he cost them, but we're going to try again. The same sort of idea, along with an option to buy. They want 22.1 million euros. We think we can get him for cheaper than that. I think 20 million euros, that is a really good deal for us. Will Mikel Arteta agree with that? He is agreeing with that one. So Laporte agrees the low move as well. Welcome, I'm Eric Laporte. He's going to go through his, well, medical, hasn't it, here at Juventus, or Juventus, which he will do. Completes the medical. Shirt on. I'm Eric Laporte. Moves to Italy. So, he's played for Bilbao. He's played for Manchester City. Only two teams. And now he's played in Serie A. I'm Eric Laporte. Joins Juve with an option to buy a 50 million euros, a 12-month loan. That is a really good deal. And he's not the only option coming in. Agreeing to the loan, 84 rate to Laporte, he's a massive step on the left foot, so I think he'd be a good, real partner alongside Bremer. Of course, Benucci getting older now, he's on his way out. Nicolas Pepe decides he will join the club as well. So two really, really good signs here at the club. Massive signs to bring in. And I think they're going to do a real business. I think Pepe can reignite his career in Italy and can be a really important player for this season. Now, what is our aim for this season? We want to get top four with this squad. You can see how good it was looking there. Fullbacks, Pepe not in there at the moment. Laporte at the back. I think we need a left back. Certainly, Pellegrini don't trust Cambiasso. Our aim this season is to get Champions League football. That is all we want to do. Just achieve Juve getting back into the top four. If we win the Scudetto, I think that would be a big achievement. Although we do have a really high rated side and we are putting really good moves in there. So, the player we're going to go through at left back. I was talking about we need a left back. Got Cambiasso is this man, Fabiano Parisi. 21 years of age, 77 rated. He looks like. The next big thing out of Italy, especially in the fullback position. I think Juve can't afford to miss out on this sort of player. What about Frambotte? Plus 23 million euros. They just want the 23. They don't want him. That's fine. We'll give you just the 23. Don't give us the money as well as the player. So Fabio Parisi joins Juventus for 23 million euros. That's a big signing for us. That is a really, really big signing for us. He'll come in and play a crucial role in the side. First choice left back. And the side is looking amazing. Now we start the season with a 1-0 win. Over Napoli, the current holders of the Scudetto, the current league title holders, can be Asso with a goal from fullback. He started ahead of Parisi today in the 67th minute. A missed penalty by Vlahovic. He's going to be big this season, Vlahovic. He has to play well. And first bit of gameplay action for you guys in episode one here. There will be three episodes of our Juve career mode as we look to whiz through uh, this season. Is trying to get top four. It's not as big of an aim as we've seen in other series like the PSG and the Dortmund where we're trying to win trophies. And we've got no Champions League, no Conference League, no nothing here with Juve as well because, of course, they have sat out of the Conference League this season. That is what they accepted. We start off with our first bit of gameplay. Game match day two of the season against AC Milan. Not a bad test, is it, to start it and see how we good we can be. Here is Paul Pogba. Could be crucial this season. Adrian Rabio, Frenchman combined. Chiesa overlapping his Parisi, the new sign, pulls it back to Paul Pogba on the left foot. Well, I said he could be crucial this season, Paul Pogba, and he think he will be. Injury-free Paul Pogba, on form Paul Pogba, is without a doubt, technically, and more than just technically, technically really, the performances he can put in, one of the best midfielders in the world. Maybe not anymore. On his day, he's fantastic. What a finish this is by Paul Pogba. Sets himself, Parisi pulls it back. And he catches it on his weaker left foot. Bends it through the legs of Timori. Mike Magnan, no chance. And Juve take the lead against Milan here. That's a really good start for Juventus and Italiano side. who have already beaten Napoli. Milan come forward. A little flick by Rafael Liao. Giving away Parisi. Oh, lovely turn by Parisi. Olivier Giroud through the back of him here. It's a late one by the captain. Olivier Giroud and it's a red card for Giroud. Frenchman through the back of young Parisi on his debut. It's a nasty one. It's a red card for Olivier Giroud. 
And I think rightfully so. I don't, I don't think the AC Milan players can particularly complain about this one. Absolutely crunching from behind. It's a horrible challenge and Giroud's gone. Shot there wide by us. And that is full time. So we beat Napoli 1-0 to start the season. And we beat Milan as well. I have to say, defensively, we're looking really solid. Laporte, Danilo, Bremen, Parisi back line with Chesney and Gol Locatelli in front. That back six is fantastic. Good start to the season. We followed up that win with a 1-1 drop against Frosinone away from home. It seems the away form, not anywhere near the same as the home form. Then back at home, Juventus 2-0 win over Elas Verona. Goals from Latomba there on his debut. Bergamo Calcio, which is Atalanta, a 0-0 draw away from home. So clear pattern here. Win at home, draw away. Then a 1-0 win at home again. Dusan Vlahovic, the goal scorer of the difference. And a great defensive performance. Another clean sheet. You see their clean sheet leader is Vojic Chesney. Five in seven games. That is going to be a key point of our season, I believe. How good our defence is. And then a 3-0 win away from home. Finally get our away form going against Italiano's former side, Fiorentina. You can see there, we currently sit in a good position in the league table, in fourth position. We want Champions League football next season. Of course, we won't be playing it, but we want to finish in the top four. That is an aim we could easily get. And we'll keep doing well. A 3-1 win at home. Dustin Vlahovic in a double from Chiesa on the score sheet. However, we do concede a goal there against Shinoa. And the same away from home. Five goals, though, on the score sheet. Timothy Wyatt, Moise Keane, Paul Pogba, Nicola Pepe with a double. First goals for him on his loan from Arsenal. He's going to be key this season, I can feel it. And we're still in fourth position. Roma, Lazio and Inter Milan, the sides above us. A bit of a way off Inter, who are all the way at the top of the table. But uh, it could be a really good title race between quite a few sides this season. I believe Napoli, Roma, Lazio, Inter, all in the title race. They're all very strong. So AS Roma, chance to test ourselves against third place side in Serie A. Above us in the league and started really well, George Mourinho's side made some really good signs over the summer. Uh, Evan and Dicker on a free transfer for Eintracht Frankfurt. They also brought in Hussein Awa on a free uh, transfer from Lyon. Awa, who's highly, highly rated. Unfortunately, his career has taken a bit of a dip. Here's Laporte looking to work it out wide. It's a bad pass by Laporte given away to Tammy Abraham. And he's given it into Rome in a good position. Abraham's quick, he's strong, and he's bursting away from Eric Laporte. The low knee, Laporte can't stop him. Abraham, a little back heel into Bellotti here. And Roma take the lead, and it's a poor one from Laporte. Couldn't make up for his mistake. And Andrea Bellotti scores to open the scoring from AS Roma. It's a good finish as well, by the way, by Bellotti. Good work from Tammy Abraham. Good pressing from Roma, the two up top there. Bellotti, Abraham with Paolo Dybala in behind. Get there. Little back heel it. Bremen doesn't know what to do, and Chesney simply beat him. Well, we've done pretty well so far against the biggest sides in the league, but AS Roma, Mourinho's side, might just be a step too far. That's a really good start by them. Well, there's a foul in there on Paolo Dybala. A free kick here for the Roma man to take. Dybala, who's good from this situation, this position. Paolo Dybala, what a free kick. Off the crossbar and in. Polish international and goalkeeper. Chesney can't keep it out. Paolo Dybala doubles Roma's lead. It's 2-0 out to AS Roma. Jose Mourinho's side... Are beating us simply, really. It's too easy. We've had a lot of the ball, a lot of possession. Tried to create chances, but no clear-cut chances. Up steps Dybala. Lovely left-footed finish off the crossbar and in no chance for Chesney. AS Roma 2. Juventus nil. That'll knock us down the table with the likes of AC Milan in behind us. Ball out wide here. We're all over the place defensively today, considering how good we've been as well. Chance here. Wide to Solly March. March under pressure from Parisi. March stumbles. March keeps going here. Referee says penalty. That is a terrible decision from the Italian official here. Yes, Parisi puts a leg out. Yes, he's physical on March, but it's not enough to push him over. He's, he's on his feet. Referee gives a penalty anyway, and Paul Dybala can get his second of the game. Dybala steps up. Can't be saved by the fantastic Chesney, who's had a really good start to the season. The goalkeeper, who's had plenty of clean sheets, but no clean sheet here today. Dybala steps up. And Paolo Dybala scores. Good finish by the Argentinian. ex Juve man against his former side. Let him go on a free. What a mistake that could have been. They come forward again here. Captain Pellegrini into Tammy Abraham. Laporte's all over the place. Throws the leg out. El Sharari, Tammy Abraham. Back to Spinazzola. And Spinazzola makes it 4-0. Battered here at home to Roma. And maybe... I mean, we've beat Napoli so far this season. We've beat... What, Inter nearly? No, we haven't beaten Inter quite yet. Lazio. 
It looks like Roma, Jose Mourinho's Roma side, are the side to beat this year in the Scudetto. And considering we're losing 4-0 to them, I've not really got confidence we're going to be the side to beat them to the Scudetto title. We want to win the league title, possibly. Yes, our aim is to get top four and get back into the Champions League and just do that for you, Vape. Just do one season where we improve them. But at the moment, we feel like we've took, taken a step back, especially in this final game here against Roma. Spent it all a nice headed finish diving for it. That is full time. Juve nil, Roma four. So we've shown we've stabilised the side defensively. We're in a Champions League place, but AS Roma tear us apart at the end of today's episode, which is a worry. Jose Mourinho's side look like the favourites of the title this season. We'll see you guys next time.